It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I might look out here and I know there's not a lot and I know people are still coming and trickling in and that's okay. And I know some of you are online and you're, you're joining in, but I'm going to encourage you this morning to enter into the presence of of our mighty God. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There is no one like him. And you know, I was just, as I was thinking about what to say to encourage you this morning, the Lord dropped in my spirit. It said, you know, God, I've seen so many things. There's been a lot happening over the last year and a half in, in, in my life. And just, I look to the left of me and I see this problem. And I look to the right of me and I see this problem. And they're not little problems. These are big problems. And I look in front of me and there's this problem. And I see behind me and there's this one. And over that corner there's that one and that one. But you know what? The word says to look up. It says to look up. And when I look up, I see my God. And I see what he is able to do. And he sees everything that's happening all around me. He knows what's going on. But he says look up. And you know in Psalm 27, it says, this is one of my favorite psalms. Because it starts out, for the Lord is my light, and whom shall I fear? And David continued on, and he said, and now, um, he said here that, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock, and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies and all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. That's here today. You offer those sacrifices of joy. He goes on to say, I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy upon me. Our God says to lift up our heads to him. So this morning, just lift up your head. Lift up your head to your God. Lift it up. Just raise that cry of joy and peace. It doesn't matter what's going on around you because our God is greater. And so today as we go into worship here, and the first song says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God says there's freedom here. Cry out to him. Lift yes, up a Lord. shout of praise. Dance Hallelujah. a little jig. Get re praise ready to just give God. your praise to God in praise the name of Jesus. Lord. So let's praise the Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, we lift you up today, God. Oh, thank you for freedom. Freedom in this place. Freedom in our lives, Lord. Break into the wild and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, places waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, places waiting.
encounter in our lives, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we trust in you. Thank you, Father God. Yes, yes Lord. Lord. Oh, there's no one like you, God. Praise to your name, Lord. Yes, Lord. We worship you, God. Oh, thank you, Lord God. You are welcome in this place, Lord God. You are welcome here, Lord God.
our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, sing our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's no one like you, Lord. Thank you, God. There's no one like you, Lord. You alone are good, Father God. Praise your name. Blessed be your holy name today, Lord. We worship you, God. Thank you, Lord. We worship you.
God, we're saying we're faithful to you as you are faithful, Lord. Lord, we love you the way you love us, God. Lord, we yield our lives. We yield our hearts to you, God. We yield our days to you, Lord God. Yes, Lord, all we are is yours. We surrender to you, God. Yes, can you lift your hands and worship him today? Sing it. So I'll stand with When you're submitted to the Holy Spirit, there's freedom. When you're submitted to the Holy Spirit, there is freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, the Scripture says, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, that's where the communion is. That's where the fellowship is. That's where the partnership is. That's where the strength is. That's where your victory's at. It's in submitting to the Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. This week, as I begin to prepare the message, the Lord spoke to me that I had to be in communion on a daily basis, not just sometimes. Not just part of the time. I can't turn him off. Because the Holy Spirit is within me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, wherever I am, wherever I go, that's where the Holy Spirit is. So many Christians in this land, in the United States, 
We're comfortable with our lives. We're comfortable with our cars and our jobs and our houses. And we turn off the spirit of the Lord because we believe we don't need him. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, where the spirit of the Lord is, that's where fear is broken. Do you understand that fear is demonic? Fear is a demonic stronghold. It has gripped our nation in so many ways. But fear only has one place in my life. And that is under my feet. Fear is defeated. I'm not afraid of COVID. I'm not afraid of what this world may do to me. I am submitted to the spirit only. And that's where my victory's at. Amen. I'm not telling you to not do the precautions and all that stuff. What I'm telling you is that fear should have no place in your life. If you're listening to me at home and you're listening online, fear should have no place in your life. Unless you're physically compromised in some way, you need to be here. Can I say that under the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning? Can I say that? Those of you that are here, I don't care if the numbers triple. We need to be right here. I don't care if they kick us out of Garfield. I'll meet in a field. I don't care. Amen. That's where I'm at, church. That's where the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And again, I'm not saying, oh, don't do the precautions or don't do this or don't do that. What I'm saying is fear should have no place in our life and fear should not hinder us from coming together the scripture says do not forsake the, the assembling of together of the saints we're to assemble we're to come together not like the Avengers but we're to assemble okay that's for all the kids out there you can go ahead and have a seat I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna preach right now because the spirit and the anointing is here and we'll do announcements and offering and all of those kind of things. If someone is willing, if someone could bring me a Deer Park water that's out there on that thing, um, that would be wonderful. I could use one of those. Mine is empty. I just looked backstage. Oh, here's one right here. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. hallelujah hallelujah number one the holy spirit is a divine person we have to see him as such we cannot see him as some mystical power we have to submit ourselves to him number one the spirit the holy spirit is a divine person number two we must recognize the holy spirit as supreme in authority he is God, and we need to honor him as such. We must submit ourselves to the Spirit of God. Church, when you begin to submit yourselves to the Spirit, your life begins to change. Oh, you begin to understand certain things. And see, we need to know more about the personality and the nature of the Holy Spirit. Elder Joe, the last two weeks, have been, was talking about the personality of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to continue in that vein here this morning. Because the more that we know the personality of the Holy Spirit, the more we begin to know Him. First of all, we need to have fellowship with the Spirit. Amen. You can't know someone you don't have fellowship with. I can't know you if I can't fellowship. I can't uh, have fellowship with you if I can't see you. That's the one thing, the, the damnable thing that's happened in 2020 is this COVID thing. I'm, I'm just going to tell you, it's awful. The, amen. That started up because it just separated all of us. Church, I hated it. I got mad one minute and cried the next. I was up and down like that. And I don't like that. I don't like that. 
And here this summer, you know, we, things begin to break, things begin to get better, and we all start coming together. And the next thing you know, all these numbers start going up. The fear starts going up, and that cloud that just hovers over us is there. But see, we don't have to submit to that cloud of depression. We don't have to submit to the cloud of fear. We don't have to submit to that cloud of darkness because the, 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 the Spirit of God, if you're submitted to Him, He gives you strength to overcome all darkness. See, we got two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And in the kingdom of God is light, and the kingdom of Satan is dark. And when you feel down and you feel the things that, that begin to pull you down and depress you, that's darkness. That's the kingdom of Satan. That's not the kingdom of light. So you have to shove those things off and cast down those imaginations and those high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. And the scripture says you take into captivity every thought. See, it's every single one that comes, every single one that begins to bring you down. God didn't create us so that every Every day we could sit around and mope around and be upset, busted, defeated, in poverty, and on and on. God created us to live in victory. Amen? He comm- How do I know that? From the very beginning, he said to mankind to subdue the earth, to take dominion. That's a victorious stance right there from the very beginning. John Bevere says this, The people who know Jesus the best are those who are intimate with the Holy Spirit. This makes complete sense because the Spirit is the one who reveals Jesus to us. So we need to have fellowship with the Spirit. We need to enter a partnership with the Spirit. And we need to have intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Into me you see. That's what we need to allow the Spirit of God to do in our lives. And to show us the things that we need to change. No one knows my wife's likes or dislikes better than I do. And no one knows my likes or dislikes better than she does. If you want to ask her what I like to eat, she knows. Trust me, she gets frustrated with some of my pickiness. Now, I've gotten a little better, but, you know, she gets frustrated with that. But she knew that going into it, amen? (laughs) Because we were together for a while. And see, some of the things, you know, I, I think about that, she gets frustrated with that. And legit, you know, that's a legit thing, you know. And so we, we think about our, our interactions with one another, our frustrations, our joys, our, our, you know, all the things, you know, our ups and downs. And, and usually it centers around relationship with each other. And what we need to understand is that with the Spirit of God, we have that same kind of relationship with emotions and everything. Mm -hmm. And see, see, sometimes we just, God, you know, we put God in the same, and God's like way out there somewhere or something. No, the Holy Spirit of God is within you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Even more so than any human on the earth, you should be able to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit in a greater capacity. Now, church, I'm preaching to myself because that requires more submission than what I'm currently doing. Can I admit that this morning? Yeah, amen. We're no way we're going to get rid of the notes and finish the notes, and that's fine. Because we can come back to it. See, what I, my goal here with this series is to take our time. Because not enough has been said about the Holy Spirit. And we can't say enough about it in this series. There, there's no way. He is awesome. The Holy Spirit, He is awesome. And make no mistake, He knows you inside and out. The question is... How much do you know him? Uh, That's the question we've got to ask ourselves. And the Holy Spirit is a he. All right? The Holy Spirit is not a she. However, in Scripture, you will see the Holy Spirit referred to in the Old Testament and the New Testament with feminine gender pronouns. Why? But not in the same, in ch- ch- characteristics, I should say, not pronouns. Characteristics. Why? Because in the Hebrew and the Greek, there are gender neutral uh, terms. In our language, we just got he, she, and it. 
You know, that, that's all we got in the English language. But in, he, in the Hebrew and in the Greek, they have gender, gender neutral terms in their language. And that is used in many places. But what is it describing? It's not describing saying the Holy Spirit is a she. So why do the writers of Scripture use a gender neutral, gender neutral term sometimes? I want to read this directly from my notes. It's important. In the original Hebrew, there are many cases where the action assigned to the Holy Spirit is feminine by function, not feminine by form. The Hebrews often wrote according to function. Now, function is according to what someone or something did as opposed to who or what it was. Nowhere in Scripture is the Holy Spirit ever described as female, but some of his actions were assigned an attribute of femininity. Again, the Holy Spirit is not female. There are some who teach that because of what I'm talking about right now. We were created in his image. Look at this in Genesis 1.27. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Now, in King James Version, you'll see the word man there. In uh, other versions, you'll see the word mankind. That's the literal translation of the Hebrew is mankind. So, in other words, male and female, it includes both. Okay, And we were created in his image, all of mankind, and we're created in his image. So God has attributes, both male and female, even though he is male. I didn't lose anybody, right? <laughs> now, why is this important? And we're going to talk about that because, this, because, look, it can be hard to understand, but I think it's important to talk about because it can improve your understanding of the Holy Spirit and your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Here's why we're talking about this when we're talking about attributes. See, the Holy Spirit is tender and gentle. That's the first attribute I want to talk about this morning. Now look, I treat my wife and I treat my daughter differently than the way I treat my sons and how I talk with them. I've tried treating my daughter in the same way that I do my sons and talking to her that way, and it doesn't go well. And the same with my wife. I learned early on I can't talk to her just in the same way as I do my bros and my, you know, my guy friends. It, it just doesn't work. I treat them differently. And men, if you're listening, you have to treat the females differently. I've got one female saying amen on that. Good. Thank you, Lord. In 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. Men, if you want your marriage to go well, you've got to treat your wife with understanding. Amen. You have to learn to interact with her as a woman. One of the things you have to learn is to treat your wife with gentleness. You can't be rough and, uh, and all that and scruff. You have to be tender and gentle. A amen. That's not to say women aren't tough, because women are tough. They're tougher than I am in many regards. I saw my wife push out four children with no pain meds, no nothing, and I went, wow. I thought I was something <laughs> till I saw my first born crown. <laughs> it, that, that, it, that's how it goes. Women are tough. You don't underestimate them. But they want and need to be treated with gentleness. Could it be that the Holy Spirit possesses the great relational strength called gentleness that we typically consider to be feminine? I say to that, absolutely. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, we have a very powerful scripture that I want you to look at. Ephesians 4 verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Mm. The word grieve in the Greek here conveys deep sorrow and distress. Let me tell you, if I treated my daughter and my wife like my sons and I just started to do that one day, I just like, okay, I'm gonna treat them like that, 
it would cause them sorrow. It would cause them distress because that's not how I should talk with them or treat them or act around them. I have to be different. Now, this word in the Greek, it comes from a word denoting a pain that can only be experienced between two people who deeply love each other. So what Paul is essentially saying here, and for those that want to know what grieving the Holy Spirit is, I'm going to tell you this morning because there's been a lot of misinformation about that and a lot of things talked about that. Here's what this means. Don't grievously hurt the one who deeply loves you. So many times we think of our relationship with God as different than those around us. But in so many respects, it's the same. How we treat others. How are you treating the Holy Spirit? Mm. And see, our treatment of him determines whether or not we grieve him or not. At any given moment. Now, church, look, this is not meant to, get, to condemn. This is to inform and to get you to see something that maybe you didn't see before so your relationship with him will begin to grow. And we want the relationship to grow so that victory will begin to come into your life and so that you begin to minister to somebody else and bring them this hallelujah, the same thing. The feeling that we felt in worship, the presence of God. You can bring that to others through the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to read this scripture in full context, this time in the New Living Translation. Verses 29 through 32. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Mm, I love that phraseology. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Do you see the tenderness of the Holy Spirit? Tenderness is truly a strength to be admired. Paul charges us in this scripture to be tender-hearted. Notice he puts this in there about don't grieve the Holy Spirit with all this stuff like don't talk anger and don't harsh words. You want to know what grieves the Holy Spirit is when we're screaming at people. Amen. And now see, many times we don't think of it that way. We just think, oh, I'm just doing damage to that person and I'm getting myself upset. It's just me. It's being affected. No. The Holy Spirit lives within you. You are affecting emotionally the Holy Spirit of God. God has emotions just like you and me. If, if not, why would he say that? Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Go back in this verse. Verse 30 with the New Living Translation. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. If you want to enjoy a healthy, vibrant relationship with your wife, with your children, with your husband, with your family members, extended family members, workers at work. If you want to enjoy that, you got to be tender hearted and speak to others accordingly to, to how the Spirit is leading you. Oh, man, it's quiet. Hallelujah. We've got to be sensitive. Church, leave this verse up here. Because, see, we need to be sensitive. Mm. Sensitive to the things that bring the Holy Spirit sorrow. We need to be sensitive to that. It's interesting that Paul's identifying bring deep sorrow to the Spirit with the following behavior. The foul, abusive language, rage, anger, harsh words, slander. Notice also that Paul didn't say, don't grieve Jesus. He didn't say, don't grieve the Father. Paul said, don't grieve the Spirit. Why? Because God the Father is in heaven and Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. But the Holy Spirit is right there within you. 
Nowhere in Scripture do you see, do not grieve Jesus. I look, it, church, I'm telling you, I've read it from cover to cover. I know what's here. The, we, the church has not put the importance of the relationship with the Holy Spirit. I mean, it's been on the back burner. It's been to the side because, oh, it's misunderstood. Oh, it's not for today and all that junk. I'm telling you right now, we're the spirit or the spirit of the living God is living within us. And we're to have relationship with him. And what we do affects him. How he feels. Does it make him not God or this or it hurt him in that way? No, no, no. It just how he feels. He grieves. He, he's going, oh, I just, I don't like how he's talking right now. Just imagine the spirit of God's literally like right there with you. And then you're, blah, 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 and he's going, stop. See, that, that, that's the image we've got to get in our head. That's what we've got to understand. And when we do this, and we submit to the Spirit, and we understand those things grieve Him, our behavior will begin to automatically change. And things will go different for you. Things will go well for you to the point where people go, what's up with you? You're smiling an awful lot. It's the Holy Spirit, right? Because it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy is an attribute of the Holy Spirit. It is the fruit of the Spirit. John Bevere says, everywhere we go, he goes. This is an intimate association. Therefore, he is deeply affected by what we allow into our lives. I want you to consider this from a different angle. If someone cusses me out, church, it's no big deal. I've had people that close to my face spitting, cussing at me. I just looked at them. Now, it didn't feel good, but, you know, I, I, okay, no big deal. But if someone cusses my wife out, oh, no. We got problems. And I'm going to have a big problem with that person. It's going to be all the spirit of God within me and everything for us not to come to fisticuffs. I can tell you that right now. You get in my wife's face, you start yelling, screaming, cussing. Especially if you're, if you're a man, oh no. Oh no, you're not doing that to my wife. I'll beat you down. I, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, that's where I'm at. I'll repent later. <laughs> but that's how you feel. And I, I, let me just ask the question to every married man in here. Is that how you feel too? Yeah. Ron didn't even hesitate. He was like, uh-uh. That's how much in love he is with his wife. You're such an example. And, and that's how much in love I am with my wife. I will beat you down. Don't mess with her. Now, I want you to see this in Scripture. Consider this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 32. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, this is Jesus, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit it will not be forgiven him either in this age or in the age to come. Those are Jesus' words. He said, man, you speak against me, forgive him. But if you're speaking against the Holy Spirit, oh no, oh no. It's that same thing where it's like, oh man, you, you cuss my wife out, uh-uh. And what Jesus is saying through the inspiration of the Father, because he only said what the Father, remember? He said, I only speak the words that my Father gives me. I only speak the words that he speaks. That's what Jesus is. So God the Father and Jesus, they're together in this, and they're like, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't speak against the Holy Spirit, especially that. Don't speak against him. Why? Because again, God the Father is in heaven and Jesus is at the right hand, but the Holy Spirit is within you. And so God and Jesus, the God the Father and Jesus the Son, they knew that when the Comforter came and Jesus breathed on his disciples, and we're going to talk about that later in the series, and he breathed on them and said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. At that moment, the Holy Spirit was in them, and therefore, the things that they did, they knew it was going to affect the Holy Spirit emotionally within them in a way that it wasn't going to affect God the Father or the Son. 
Jesus. Is this all starting to come around? Now, now see, for me this week, I was like, just revelation, just more. Oh, my goodness. Because when you put it like that, it makes sense. And when we see, see, these are things that a lot of times we just pass over in Scripture. We don't pay attention to. And we go out and live the way we want to live, thinking that, oh, it's, it's all good. It's just my, it's my life. It's my life, and I'll live it how I want to do it. You know, it's all about me. And, and the truth is, it's different. It's supposed to be about the Spirit. Our interaction with Him is to be treasured and protect, protected. It's important for us to remember that we can cause Him sorrow at times, even deep sorrow. Why is this important to your relationship with him? Because the manifestation of his presence in your life will be thwarted if you lack understanding of how you should relate to him. Amen. Church, he is sensitive. He's tender and gentle. He's sensitive, but he's also strong. The Holy Spirit's called the comforter, correct? Who do children typically run to when they get hurt? They run to mommy. Let's just be real. When they're really, really little, they get hurt. They're coming to mommy. Why? Why do they come to mommy? Now, if mom's not around, they may go to dad. But boy, if there's a choice between the two, when they get hurt when they're little, it's all mommy. Let me come to my dad in the, in most of the time. Now, I, this is because, see, you know, the, did you know that in that several states, they've created policies that highlight the role of female officers in addressing juvenile crime. Hawaii even has a policy that states, if possible, to use female officers with juveniles who got arrested. Because women naturally exhibit an innate ability to comfort and console. And children respond to that and open up. A amen. So with the Holy Spirit, it, you know, John Bevere in his book, he compares the Holy Spirit to King David. King David was very tender, sensitive, compassionate. You know, when Absalom rebelled, you know what David did? It, you know, yes, he told the army, he said, go and stop this rebellion. And then, but when he found out that Absalom died, he wept even though Absalom was trying to kill him and overthrow him. He wept. David was extremely sensitive, tender-hearted, very kind. He had compassion. His relationship with Jonathan is one of the best accounts in Scripture of an intimate, close relationship. we got to never forget, though, that David was a warrior who killed a giant and killed thousands of men. He was sensitive but strong as well. He was the leader of the mighty men, probably the greatest group of fighters in history. In one instance, David even planned to kill a man who refused to give water and food to his followers. Look, you can see all this. 1 Samuel 25 on that one. 1, 2 Samuel 23, 2 Samuel 19. Just begin to read the account of David. You'll see the tenderness, but you'll also see the warrior because David wasn't a wimp. He was a warrior. He was one who was tender and sensitive, but he was also mighty. You can see in the Psalms, you can, talk, you can see his, his, his tender heart is crying out from his spirit, Oh, my soul longs for thee. And all these, the phraseology and the tears and the weeping that, that David did. This is, why, this is why I believe God said that uh, David was a man after his own heart. Why? Because he was tender and gentle, but also strong. How he lived his life. And look, he wasn't perfect. He made some big mistakes. And look, we're all, we're going to make big mistakes. I get it. But you know what? The more that we're submitted to God, the less mistakes we will make. The more that we're submitted to his spirit, the less we're going to mess up. The Holy Spirit is called the spirit of might in Isaiah 11.2. He's got kind, he's kind hearted. He feels things deeply, deeply. We got an amazing God, church. An amazing God that lives within you and with me. Church, I said a moment ago, the Holy Spirit could be made sorrowful by our words and actions. 
we got to never forget the Spirit has taken up permanent residence in us. In other words, when you walk into a movie theater, when you walk into a bowling alley, a shopping mall, the grocery store, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is there. So what is it? We have to watch what we say, what we do, what are we watching, what are we doing. We've got to watch these things. In church, I'm not trying to get you to be legalistic. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that there is the Holy Spirit of God. You have a relationship with Him. You're to be intimate with Him. And you need to be cognizant of what grieves Him. And church, if you have no idea because you're like, well, I just, I feel nothing. Here's the thing. That's when we're to submit to Him verbally. We say it with our mouths. Just in the same way that I talk and I need to get to know, you know, anybody else with my mouth. I need to get to know somebody. We do it verbally with our mouth. And we begin to talk to the Holy Spirit. And say, Holy Spirit, I submit to you in my life. I thank you for showing me and, and, and opening me up. Showing me the things that are not pleasing to you. What are the things that grieve you, that bring you sorrow? What is it? See, we're to talk verbally like that and begin to pray. And let me tell you something else. If you're like, if you're one of these people where, you know, you just watch anything under the sun on TV, it don't matter what the content is, and we don't need to list all the content. I'm just telling you the really bad stuff. And you're like, well, it just doesn't bother me. I want to challenge you. Turn all that off for a couple of weeks. And instead of doing that, do something else. And also verbally say this to the Spirit of God to reveal to you the things that you should watch and not watch. And then come back and start watching. And just notice how you feel as you watch. Amen. Amen. Now look. I say, well, TJ, why are you getting all up into this? Why are you getting all up in this business? Why are you doing that? Because I do not want the Holy Spirit grieved by my actions or yours. So the question we need to ask ourselves this morning, I got some more, we're not going to get to it, is I, I, how is my fellowship with the Holy Spirit and have I grieved him in any way? Let's all stand. I want to read a quote by John Bevere. It's the last one here. It says, Thank God that we are forgiven and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. But while we believers are in right standing with God, we still have to reestablish communion with the Holy Spirit when we have saddened him. And son, I just want you to leave that on the screen. Because sometimes I've been confused when I read certain scriptures, but this week even some things started coming to my mind. You remember the phrase in 1 John where it says, we must cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the spirit and the flesh. I always wondered about that. What, the, what is the cleansing? Oh, I researched the guy did all this, didn't didn't help me. I'm cutting in and out, but it didn't help. I researched all that stuff. But I believe now after reading all of this and looking at this, that that scripture doesn't really have much to do in terms of your salvation. It's talking about your communion with the Holy Spirit. And so he is saying, cleanse yourself. And how do we cleanse ourselves? By submitting to him, getting on our faces before God, and, and, and just pouring out and then saying to God, I submit to you, Holy Spirit, I submit to you 100%. Not part way, not some of the way, 100%. All of my actions, everything. Everything. And so, yes, while I'm in right standing with God, 
When I don't feel the Spirit of God, though, I've got to reestablish that communion with Him. I have to reestablish it. And maybe you're here this morning or you're listening online and it's like you haven't had that communion with the Holy Spirit. Now is your time. There is no better time than the present. There's no need to wait. Establish and reestablish that communion with the Holy Spirit today. I can't implore you enough. Because of what he's done in my life and what the Spirit of God and how he transforms you. Submit to him and pour it out. Thank you, Jesus. Right here. Come up here. Thank you, Jesus. You go ahead and turn that on. Turn that on. Do you feel the urgency of the Spirit, says the Lord your God? Do you feel me calling to you this day? For know that you shall come and you must come when I call you, says the Lord. For yes, the time is short, but know that I draw you. I draw you today, says the Lord. For today is the day of salvation. And I'm coming against that shame, says the Lord. For there is nothing that my blood cannot cleanse. There is nothing that I cannot deliver you from, says the Lord your God. Know this today, if you come to me, I shall not turn you away. For I am he who lives and lives forevermore. And I am he who pours out my spirit in abundance, says the Lord. Because of my great love that I have shed for you on that cross, says the Lord God Almighty. I love you, I love you, I love you. Hear me today, hear me today. You shall increase in this day. How shall you do it? By my spirit, says the Lord. Do not listen to the enemy's lies. Do not listen to his lies. I am the truth and I am the way and my word is life and it is spirit, says God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Now, understand that today, today is that time. Why is he so passionate? Because the Holy Spirit's coming out of his chest. He's got that gift. And he's using that gift and the Holy Spirit's coming out and he's being obedient to that. Your gifting might be different and it is different. When you go from here, the Holy Spirit should be coming out of your chest at some times during the week telling you something. Telling you something. What is burning within you? I remember one time in my house when we were doing the recordings at my house and I was talking with Elder Tracy and she, she called me over right after preaching. She goes, and she was shaking her and she goes, I got something. And she had a word and we did a, she did a midweek word. It was burning in her chest. She had to get it out. And she knew and the Spirit was saying it was for the body. What is the Spirit speaking to you? What is he saying? Is it burning in your chest? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You just heard a prophetic word. That's called prophecy. And that's the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit speaking. And that's God speaking through an individual. Yes. Now, God uses me in that capacity also, but He also used me in capacity of exhortation. And God gave me a word earlier while we were praising and worshiping, and it goes with our message today. And I want to exhort you, uh, and look that up. That's one of, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does. And to exhort you means to, to lift you up, build you up. Now, the Lord spoke to me, and he says, I speak into your ear. Hear what I have to say. I have spoken and prophesied over you and this church. Mm -hmm. And all that I have said shall come to pass. All that I've said shall come to pass. All that I have said shall come to pass. Three times. All right? He said it three times. It shall come to pass. So what has he spoken to you? It shall come to pass. So we don't go by what we see or hear, but we go by what God says. We go what the Word of God says. He also said, I am looking for those who will believe. Who will believe what I have prophesied. I am looking for those that will not give up, but will continue in faith. 
So he's looking for us to continue in faith and to believe. You see, as he, and he says these things will come to pass. So number one, we come in agreement with what God is saying. We are his instrument on this earth. And we speak it forth and we believe it. And we stand in faith believing Casting off the discouragement and the woes and all those things. So as we are ambassadors, as we are the individuals that God has filled us with, and, he, and, and, and he, ha- he needs us to see it be fulfilled, we come to an agreement with it, but then we have, we, we have to you know, it, be submissive to it. But, but what happens is, is what the pastor is talking about here. As we have communion with God and we commune with Him, not just every now and then or Sunday morning, but on that daily basis. And the Lord says, as you do that, you are going to be in fuel and endued with power on high and you will see these things come to pass. So I'm going to ask you this morning, and I'm going to ask you to lift your hands. For those of you that will say this morning with the pastor, Pastor, you're going to be in communion with God every day. You're going to be in that presence every day. Because you know that the times that we're living in. And you know that it can't, we cannot have the victory without that. How many of you will join your pastor and say, Every day I'm going to have communion with my Lord. Just keep your hand up. Father, we just praise you right now. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we, will, we commit to you right now, every day, to be in your fellowship and in communion with you in Jesus' name. Now put your hands down. Now here's the next thing. Now this was something that was coming to me I, by the Spirit. Uh, he's telling me to do something that I don't want to do. Well, not really. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to get you in on it too because I'm going to tell you what it is because you humble yourself. In doing it but it's going to set you free and it's going to set me free it's going to set my house free we have been through a lot and there's a lot of opposition there is a lot of opposition fear the things the pastor talked about uh, and there are levels of irritation that have grown within our household. There's a problem here and a problem there and a problem there. And it becomes pretty hard. We're dealing with problems that we haven't been used to. We're creatures of habit and like for things to go along, but everything's changed and continues to change. So you might want to have a family meeting. And in that family meeting, recommit to the Lord and to deal with whatever hindrances might be but whatever irritations whatever the case might be shut every door shut every door just as he took here in the word here today and and we take a look at those things that would grieve the Holy Spirit we shut every door we repent of everything and anything ignoring God being too busy for God, but we take authority over the and we pray together as a family. We pray together as a family, pray it over our homes, because I'm telling you right now, there's some things in our home that has to be driven out. There's some things in our home that's, that shouldn't be there, and that comes from the attack of Satan. You see, you think, well, it, I, I'm just a one family here, or I'm just a this or a that. No, you're more than that, because you're a part of the family of God, and you are a target for the enemy, and the enemy has laid a, a snare. You think it's a snare, it's for the nation? Yes, it's for the nation, but no, really, it's for the church in the nation. It's for the body of Christ that's in the nation 
that he set the snare for and those snares have been set and he's come after every person who has pro- 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 confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and he's come after every church to shut our mouths and to, and to take authority over us and God's saying now it's time to rise up and this is what will bring forth and this is what God says come into that place and in that position that I've called you to be in that I may fulfill the prophecies that I may be able to do that which I have desired and what you desire that I put in your heart so God wants us to come into that position and what we're talking about right now is what uh, God is instructing us to do in our homes that the glory of the Lord may fill and a habitation a habitation taking place in our hearts and lives can you say amen I'm done now Amen. I, I want to implore you to just do exactly what he said with your family. And those that are listening online as well, to do that with your family. I'm going to ask everyone to go ahead and just be seated just one more time. And uh, at the end, I'm going to ask Brother Landy to come forward, if you could, Brother. If you, uh, and, and I'm going to ask Brother Landy to come, and we're going to you know, receive the offering. And if you're listening at home, you can send it in online. And, you know, if the Lord speaks to you, do, you know, do that. Be obedient to the Spirit in that. After he's done there, those of you that are here, if you need agreement and prayer touching anything, Brother Landy and Dad will be down front. Pastor Hall will be down front to pray with you, minister with you. Okay? So don't forget, as far as announcements go, you know, this Wednesday night, monthly prayer. We need prayer more than anything. Okay? So monthly prayer. Speak it real loud. And, and be in prayer on Wednesday. We are also going to be in prayer for Afghanistan. Continue to pray for them. Uh, so much prayer is needed there. So be sure and do that. As far as the rest of the announcements, just look at it in the online or newsletter. If you don't have the newsletter, sign up. Get it so you can know. Go to the website. All right. God bless and Brother Landy. Amen. Amen. Well, we have the ways to give on the screen there. Um, you can go to the church website. Click on the Give Now tab. You can also text it in to 703-997-4640, or you can always mail it in to the Connection Church, 7658 Woodbridge, Virginia. One passage of Scripture for today's offering, I think it ties in with today's message, Luke 6, 37 through 38. And the Scripture reads, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with, though, it shall be measured to you again. And it ties into today's message, and is that we only want to sow what we desire to reap. And the Holy Spirit, as we've heard in the message today, doesn't want us to be condemning, judgmental, but forgiving and sores of things that not only will make us better, but will make our church better and will make our community better. Amen. So with your tithes and offerings in your hand, let us pray. Father, thank you today for reminding us that what we sow, we shall reap and more than we sow. So we bring our tithes and offerings to sow into the works here at the Connection Church. Now we agree by saying, be it unto us according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those in the sanctuary, you can give your tithes and offerings as you exit. Amen. God bless you.